On February 2nd, 2005, at 1718 Eastern Standard Time, a Challenger 600, November 370 Victor, ran off the departure end of runway 6 at Teterboro, New Jersey, at a ground speed of 110 knots, through a perimeter fence, across a six-lane highway, struck a vehicle, into a parking lot, and then impacting a building. M0A Online Ground School and M0A Nation, Jason here. Welcome into the second part of our accident analysis series. You know I'm not a big fan of talking about accidents that have fatalities. This one, oddly enough, just deals with, although you hear that intro and you go, my goodness, well, this one only deals with serious injuries here today. We'll get more into that accident here in just a bit. I want to remind you all, in this um, emergency preparedness accident investigation series that we're going through, uh, we are giving away a, uh, a survival kit. M0Acontest.com and we are gonna be making up, a this is actually the one from 23 Mike Zulu, uh, the one that I personally fly with, it is like a go kit. And it's a kit I hope I never have to use. It literally sits underneath the seat of 23 Mike Zulu with the handle out. So if I'm getting out of the airplane, I can reach under the seat, grab this guy, and it's coming with me. First aid kit, everything else uh, in here as well. Just a little floats, waterproof, all that stuff. We're gonna be building out a survival kit for a, uh, for a winner. M0Acontest.com if you'd like to be entered to win that, right? A good pilot's always learning. A good pilot is always prepared as well. I'd love to hear some things that are in your survival kit as well. Let's get back uh, to this accident that we're talking about an aborted takeoff uh, that leads to an overrun. And why would that happen, especially with a professional flight crew like we're going to learn about? You see, in this accident, I want to start with the end in mind. I want to start with what the NTSB concluded. And the NTSB determined the probable cause of this accident was the pilot's failure to ensure the airplane was loaded within the weight and balance limits uh, and their attempt to take off with a center of gravity well forward of the forward takeoff limit. This, the NTSB concluded, prevented the airplane from rotating at its intended rotation speed. How does this happen, right? A lot of this comes back to training. You see, the FAA found that Platinum Jet Management, that's the company conducting this charter, well, they themselves didn't actually have a Part 135 certificate. They instead had an agreement with another company to use theirs. So this created an environment of limited oversight and enabled the development of these systemic patterns of flight crew performance deficiencies. For example, the weight and balance, it wasn't manually completed, nor did either pilot actually complete a CG to look at the center of gravity. They depended entirely on the FMS, just programming it in there. And you know what? I love using technology. I can, and we'll, we'll show it, um, you know, this uh, during our big live stream at the end of this month, I'll show you how to do a, a digital weight and balance and it is great. But if you're working off of data that's incorrect, like in this example, um, they didn't use the actual passenger weights required by their standard operating procedures. Uh, and in fact, the accident airplane's empty weight, it had been modified, like scratched out in their version of the POH and written in a new weight by hand. That's just a little bit strange. If we take it a step further here, talking weight and balance, this is uh, table two from the NTSB report. You'll see something called a percent of MAC, percentage of MAC. Uh, MAC is the way that a swept wing uh, aircraft, that how they calculate CG. MAC, by the way, stands for mean aerodynamic cord. And it's just an imaginary line simulating a rectangular wing. So a normal percentage of MAC is somewhere around 25% to be considered in balance, meaning that the CG falls about 25% behind the leading edge of the wing. Look at our table here. It's at 12%, right? You can see that, that forward CG. You can see how that makes it difficult to actually take off to pull back in this case. So also, did you see on that table, we were overweight? Not by a lot, but overweight is overweight with a forward CG on top of it. 
How do we avoid this type of accident? Well, we must avoid complacency. Are you calculating a weight and balance and center of gravity for each and every flight? And are you doing it off of accurate data? Because let me tell you, performance changes, we know due to weather, but also to passenger weights, changes in bags, extra people, passengers getting on, passengers getting off, your fuel load is changing. As you burn fuel, your CG is changing. So you may, oftentimes we forget that it's called weight and balance. And sometimes we get so fixed on the weight, I don't wanna be over my weight. Well, let me tell you, you can be within your weight limits, but be out of balance. And in this case, yes, they were above their weight limits. Not by much, but over is still over, but they were well outside of the balance limits. Now, keep this in mind, if you're flying several different types of airplanes, there are just differences even between a 172 Lima model and a 172 Mike model. Um, even hopping in out of the same types of airplanes. Did you check the baggage compartment on pre-flight? So many of you, just the checklist says baggage door and you make sure the baggage door is good, but you ever look back there? For example, we have a, a tool bin that just carries, uh, again, some tools that we could need if we were stranded or in that survival type scenario like I was sharing at the beginning of this video here. That tool bin is underneath the back seat. What if those, I don't know, 15 pounds of tools slid on a takeoff all the way to the back? That's something else to be mindful of. Um, what about bags left behind by others, right? Are you checking to make sure what's in the baggage compartment, not just the baggage door, is good? You know, you can never depend just on your electronic flight bag or your FMS. Um, you need to understand how weight and balance really works. And you need to understand the characteristics of a forward CG or an aft CG as well. In this case, the Challenger didn't even bother to compute a CG location. And even if they did, they were working off of empty weight, which was wrong. You see, we're gonna discuss this concept of weight and not just weight, but advanced equipment like this, like using an FMS. It is only good if you know how to fully use it. So I can't wait to read your comments below this video. Again, m0acontest.com have a super cool gift for you. A gift you'll never have to use but you'll be really, really glad you have it. M0acontest.com to hop on over there, get a chance to win. Again, like last month, we're gonna do a big live stream at the end of the month. Details for that down below as well. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. Leave me a comment that you are committed, by the way, to doing a weight and balance each and every flight. In the meantime, most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. See ya.